I've done a lot of videos about non-L Canon lenses, but this time I'm going to be talking about the top dog in the Canon lineup, the RF 100mm f2.8 L macro. And I'm also going to give you three tips on how to get great photos with it. A great macro lens can really bring the wow to photography. Let's have a look at this lens and what it can do. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, Hayward here. I mentioned at the top that we're going to be talking about the RF 100, but we're also going to be talking about this EF 100, which is my tried and true. The reason I'm doing this video is because I am trying to determine whether it's upgrade time for me. And we're going to take a little different approach today. Instead of talking about portraits, we're going to talk about macro photography or product photography. A lot of you don't know that I started in the film and video commercial space where product was quite a lot of the things we did. I also did quite a bit of stock photography. So I really enjoy the product photography space. So this guy really is kind of a workhorse. Let's talk about the features of the new RF 100 f 2.8 L lens first. Okay, so right out the gate, the RF lens has a control difference here. It's got something called an SA control. What that is, is spherical aberration. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Apparently, and I'm going to show a few sample images here, you can adjust the appearance of the bokeh in an image by turning this uh, control. Now, it also slightly changes the magnification a little bit, as you'll see from the sample images that I shot. But if you look at the out of focus bokeh light spots in the back, that's where you really see the difference. It, from one side of the control to the other, it really renders those bokeh uh, highlights or whatever's in the background differently. And for me, that's an artistic choice that, wow, this guy never had anything like that. So I got to wrap my head around that. I've, I've never thought about modifying the spherical aberration while I'm shooting. All right, so this is a, a kind of a big feature. If you do a lot of close-up macro product work, there is a difference in magnification. The EF 100 macro was, uh, it had a magnification of one to one. The RF lens has a magnification of 1.4 to one. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but it makes a difference. Once again, that's one of those things when, when you're in the macro or product world, you're really going to notice it. So uh, that's a feature I really like for sure. Okay, this next feature I'm going to talk about subjectively as a photographer, not as a laboratory lens tester, which I most certainly am not. But this RF lens focuses fast and quiet. I don't have a way to compare it to the EF, which also focused quite fast. But back when I got this lens, I wasn't shooting video. So the quiet part of this one matters now more but the speed matters the most. Also, stabilization in this guy really rocks. I've handheld some shots, just playing around with the lens a little bit, and wow, <laughs> it can save your butt if you are hand-holding 100 millimeter. If you've ever tried it, it's a little challenging sometimes, especially when you're doing macro work, you're going in and out of focus and your hands are moving a little bit all the stabilization you can get. If you're using something like an R5 with the in-body in addition to the stabilization, you're golden. You are going to love this lens. Okay, now I am doing a little demo of using this lens in a product situation, meaning in studio, macro, shooting product. And of course, I'm, I'm going to shoot some coffee beans because it's coffee and photography. What else would I shoot? Doesn't really matter. Gives a good idea of what 
or how I like to do macro product photography. A little bit about lighting, a little bit about some theory here. Let me show you the setup I'm gonna be using for this demonstration. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is set up this spoon to fake it to make it look like it's tilting over this way like coffee beans are spilling out of it. And I'm gonna use these handy dandy clamps to do a little fakery here. There we go. Voila, we're only shooting this area, so I don't care about seeing this. Okay, now we're gonna bring in some coffee beans. Make it look like it's spilling out of this spoon. Of course, you're watching this. You know it didn't really happen this way, but you know, if we do this just right and someone sees it, their mind will fill it in and say, oh, that just happened. Now, one thing I'm not doing is I'm not, if I was doing product photography, I would find hero beans here and set them towards the lens. Product photography is a whole thing. I enjoy it. But for right now, this is good enough for what we're doing in this video. All right, here we go. Here's our setup from camera's eye view. We have the RF 100 2.8 macro. Here's what the camera's seeing. Again, this is not going to be perfect. This is my main light, the small rig RC 120B. B is bicolor. Okay, coming around here, I have the small rig RM120 as the edge light. What this light is doing is it's putting an edge light on the back of these beans. Again, I would do this in a lot more detail if I was actually shooting the product shot, but that's pretty much your setup for what we're doing in this video. Okay, let's talk about macro photography here for just a second. As you see from this setup, uh, the, the camera is very zoomed in, and so one of the things you wanna take into account when you do macro photography like this is that depth of field is hugely amplified. So if you like to shoot lenses wide open, in the case of this lens, 2.8, when you are at macro distances, your focus is gonna fall off like in less than an inch. And so you don't really have to open the lens up to get beautiful depth of field. For the sample I'm shooting here, I shot at f4, and that's really kind of shallow. In fact, I don't know that that image would be accepted for stock because it's too shallow. Now, like I said in the setup, if I, if I tweaked the beans and, got, and I was focusing on a bean or a couple of beans, yeah, sure. But you don't need to open that lens all the way up when you're only this far away from your subject or the depth of focus is only gonna be this far. Well, how do you mitigate the problem of depth of field? Well, not a problem. How do you mitigate it if it's too shallow? Well, you can change the angle. I'm gonna show you a different angle here of how I move the camera to an overhead setup, which of course flattens the depth of field. Okay, we've just made one change here for the overhead setup. I have moved my tripod into position here. <laughs> Make sure you got weight on the back of your tripod when you have that camera hanging there. To do the overhead shot, you can kind of see what the shot looks like here. That's the only difference. The main light, edge light, nothing's changed. I just moved the camera overhead. And it gets more of your subject in focus. I'm gonna give you a little tip. That's why you see a lot of food photography today shot from overhead. If you've never tried to shoot food from the side, it's really challenging to get like an entire plate of food in focus with a macro lens. Try it sometime, you'll see what I'm talking about. And some years ago, I think that that's why the trend went to be put the camera on top of the food because God, it makes focus so much easier on the photographer. Okay, so the last tip I wanna give you here is about lighting and not surprisingly, it's, it's gonna be a similar lighting pattern to what I use for portraits. You see the large main light in the setup the way I showed you and then I showed you the smaller light as an edge light. Now, this is a quick setup just for demonstration purposes, but when you're lighting and, and product, it's all about dimensionality and texture um, and depth. So you want the light to have the right amount of 
contrast and texture to really make what you're shooting stand out. And if this were a full product shot, I would probably have that little edge light very narrow, maybe with an egg crate, just to shoot that light across the subject to really just give the ridges and edges of the beans little edge lights. This takes some time. I, I, if you're interested in that, hit me up in the comments and I'll go through a real full session for stock photography, how I would do it with product. It's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work. Okay, so what are my thoughts? Is this Canon's best lens? I have a soft spot for product and, and macro photography, and I haven't seen any other lenses in Canon Stable that can come close to this, I'll be honest with you. I tested the, the non-L uh, 85 millimeter, which has um, a mild macro capability, very good lens, but it does not stand up to this guy. This guy for macro product work in Canon's line, in my experience, is the gold standard. If you don't have a macro lens for professional type work and you're looking to get one, oh, hands down, <laughs> you won't go wrong. Now, it's expensive, but this is for product pro level product work. If you need a lens to come through for you, get that product as best as the Canon system can do, that guy's going to do it for you right there. Is it worth upgrading from the EF? That's a question. That EF lens, this guy, it still takes fantastic images. And I, I have gotten so many images, money earning images from it. But the spherical aberration control and the slightly increased magnification and the, of course slightly better optics because it's a much newer lens. If I get a big product gig come up, yeah, I'm gonna have to upgrade it. It's better, it's, it's clearly better. That's my thoughts on it. So it's up to you. I've given you my very high level, very quick appraisal of it. I, I didn't dive deep into this because I didn't think that I would need to. I knew this was going to be a phenomenal lens. If you have any questions about macro photography or this lens or just any comments about the video, I welcome to hear from you in the comments. Thank you for coming to see the video. I appreciate your patronizing the channel. Until the next video, cheers.